Yeah, I, if I started to tell all the experiences that we've had, the bad experiences with problems in our lab-based um, research facilities with environmental conditions, it would probably take me hours. If you look over my shoulder right now, you'll see two giant holes in the wall. I have no idea what they're there for. <laughs> For years, we've had problems with leaking pipes in the physics building, faulty ventilation systems, um, many, many water problems. Um, and so it's not surprising that we now have some new residents in the building. <laughs> uh, a large number of bats have taken up residence. The current buildings that the department is located in are simply constraining the possibilities and the potential for what can happen in the Department of Physics and Astronomy. If we want to be a top-notch research facility, which is what we have to be, then we have to have the right environmental conditions to do that. The research that is conducted in these laboratory spaces has extremely tight tolerances on everything from airflow to vibration control, and the old building that we were occupying had such outdated HVAC facilities and such unsafe um, seismic stability that it was simply impossible to conduct many experiments that were necessary to advance the core research enterprise uh, in physics and astronomy. As majors in physics and astronomy become increasingly popular on campus, what we're seeing in our current buildings is students performing experiments for their lab classes in the hallways, if you can imagine that. It is not inspiring for students to have to go into the hallway to perform basic physics experiments in a required lab class that's part of a physics major. Students deserve better than that. That was one experience in, I remember, um, 2016. I think a floor was maintained and then they had a leak. And this was not just water, it was some solvent and some solvent water mixture was absorbed by the ceiling tiles until they were so full that a soft mass essentially dropped on an optical table where you have equipment for hundreds of thousands of dollars. The conditions are not what they should be for a modern teaching lab. The Department of Physics and Astronomy plays a critical role in training future STEM professionals, but its true impact is on both the educational and research side. On the educational side, virtually every STEM student on campus takes a physics class. On the research side, faculty members pursue fundamental physics on all length scales. There are applications of that basic research in everything from semiconductor technology to data science to biotech. For far too long, we've been trying to train students in, for a 21st century economy in 19th century infrastructure. And this building will completely modernize the way that we train students studying physics and astronomy. The new building is going to significantly help us with recruitment. And recruitment means um, the recruitment of the best students and recruitment of the best faculty. Students deserve a space that can help them fulfill their potential and set them on the path to whatever they want to do um, in the university, in their careers, and actually help inspire them to think of new careers that they want to unfold. This building project and your contributions to it will have a lasting legacy at the University of Utah through the vast numbers of students that are trained in this building and through the research that's conducted that will fuel new frontiers of scientific discovery. Yeah, we are really excited about the, um, the discoveries and the inventions um, that will come out of this new building. The challenges facing our world, and especially the ones that we see here locally around energy and water, climate, air quality. These problems will require new scientific breakthroughs to advance progress on. The future is collaboration, the future is interaction, the future is experiential learning in some of the most modern and inviting spaces that we can offer. And that's what this building is going to be.